Want to be a knight in shining armor and save your mother earth, the damsel in distress? Want to know how to tame a dragon and make it work for us instead of against us? Back, dragon! Back, I say! In this course, as you've been navigating the food, energy, water nexus, you've heard a lot about how we can and are using the simple process of anaerobic digestion to turn food wastes back into healthy food all while producing clean, renewable energy and helping keep our fresh water clean and fresh. We've lovingly talked about our biodigesters as domestic dragons. Metaphorical, but literally fire-breathing dragons that can safely be domesticated and brought into homes and communities to magically transform the most troublesome organic wastes from our kitchens, our restaurants, our yards, our farms, and our toilets into fuel and fertilizer. And all without a single puff of smoke. Do you ever wonder what really goes on inside the belly of the beast? What goes on inside the stomach of the biodigester to make this closed virtuous circle work so well? This animation gives you a window into this mysterious world of the outwardly synthetic, but inwardly completely natural world of biogas. First of all, a biodigester is really just a stomach, right? <laughs> a kind of artificial solar plexus, the literal guts of a biogas system. It's a simple chamber that uses biomimicry to replicate what goes on in any animal's guts as it digests its food, whether it's a person, a cow, a horse, or a pig, or <laughs> a dragon. The principle is simple. The dragon eats, eat, uh, and no, it pees. No, no. And it farts. <clears throat> yeah. Biogas. <clears throat> Biogas is simply fart gas. In this case, a very desirable flatulence that we design our digesters to create for our benefit. <laughs> really? A biodigester, uh, like these uh, Solar City IBC tank based do it yourself biogas systems, is designed, like all biodigesters, to eat, pee, and fart by taking a simple watertight, airtight tank and plumbing it with three pipes one for it to eat, one for it to pee, and one for it to fart. The stomach is completely filled with water and an inoculant of microbes that we get from real animal manures that came from real, or imaginary, animal stomachs and intestines. The feeding pipe, or mouth and throat, of the dragon has a mouth and neck above the stomach, like we do, and a tube that mimics the esophagus of an animal, which extends down into the bowels of the tank so the food can get to the bottom. It has an opening on the side so food waste can slide into the center of the stomach. Most proteins and carbohydrates and other food solids sink to the bottom to be eaten by microbes, while fats and oils and grease float on top. As they get broken down through anaerobic fermentation, they tend to get to the same density or buoyancy as water, and a liquid compost begins to accumulate around the center of the tank. The dragon tank has another pipe running down to the bottom with a hole in the center where completely digested food, now a nutrient-rich liquid about the same density as water, can flow out from. It also rises up above the tank to a level just below the feeding tube's mouth and then bends so that excess liquid can spill out into the garden or into a bucket. Every time we feed the dragon's mouth, it thus pees out the same amount of compost tea. <laughs> Feeling better, buddy? However, in this case, it isn't garbage in, garbage out, but rather garbage in, liquid treasure out. Every gallon of ground up food waste you put in, you get a gallon of the best fertilizer imaginable, an NPK rich slurry that can be used to grow vegetables and fruits hydroponically, completely without soil. Of course, as anyone who has ever eaten beans knows, eating and drinking doesn't just make you pee, but fart as well. For that, we have a gas outpipe sticking out from the very top of the tank, 
where the bubbles of gas rise and accumulate, and it sticks up above the feeding pipe so that as we release the gas, which we use to fill balloons that we connect to our stoves or our generators, no liquid comes out with the gas. <clears throat> oh, 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 really? <clears throat> Unlike most animals, biogas dragons rarely, if ever, poo. They don't need to because they do such a thorough job of digesting the food waste that sludge hardly ever builds up. Almost all the nutrients come out in the liquid pee. But the tank does have a drain at the bottom in case you feed it stuff that can't break down, like straw or grass or leaves or wood shavings or paper, like toilet paper. And in that case, you just remove the sludge. Um, <clears throat> no, actually, we don't need this. No, because it, yeah, that's what I just, thanks. Like they do in a septic tank where it builds up from the toilet paper used and then they dry it and use it as a solid fertilizer and soil conditioner. Biodigesters are very efficient when they're kept warm and fuzzy. And every thousand liters, like these IBC tanks, can take a five gallon bucket worth of food a day when kept at mammalian body temperature of 37 C. Now that's 98.6 Fahrenheit for you Americans. And yes, I know you're not a mammal. We'll get to that. At these temperatures, a bucket of ground up food waste can give up to a thousand liters of gas within 24 hours enabling us to cook for about two hours on a single burner at a medium flame or even run a two kilowatt generator for about 45 minutes to charge batteries with biogas derived electricity. The gas, of course, can also be used for gas lamps or on-demand gas water heaters. Now beat that. When the temperature is lower, say 20 to 25 degrees C, which is average room temperature and the average temperature of a reptile, like you, and there's no heating, they can still take about half that amount of food and produce about half the gas. The lower the temperature, the less they can take and the less they produce. Which is why, in our experiments in northern climates, we've placed our domestic dragons indoors. Uh-huh. Right in the family basement. <laughs> Cute little guy. That way, we keep them from hibernating in the winter. And yes, it is safe. So, the technique is really very simple for making a domestic dragon and making your domestic dragon comfortable. In order to improve their ability to digest, we also take a tip from nature and radically increase the surface area inside the stomach or intestines. Now see, nature uses all sorts of invaginations and microvillae to rough up the inside of an animal's stomach. They're anything but smooth, and a biodigester follows exactly that principle. In ours, we put in lots of things that can fill up the stomach with surface area without clogging the pipes. <laughs> I mean, often we'll throw in tons of plastic bottle caps. Open up. <laughs> uh, other times we'll take mesh laundry bags and fill them up with shredded water bottles or pine cones or wood chips or biochar or lava rock or plastic pond filter blocks. Yes, we do anything with lots of surface area, and then put a small stone at the bottom of the bag and a piece of styrofoam at the top so it floats in the center of the tank. We make as many as we can and shove them inside the tank. Keep eating, keep eating. You're good. So that they're floating around in the stomach of the dragon like jellyfish or like a coral reef. See, the idea is to have the inside act something like a coral reef with plenty of places where food particles can get trapped and eaten by the microbes living inside without them getting washed out when the dragon drinks. The more of these surfaces we make, the more food we can feed to the dragon and the more gas he will make. We get pretty creative about how to do that depending on where we are and what's available. It's the principle that matters, not the materials themselves. Into larger digesters, we've put in brick and concrete block walls old radiators, broken ceramic toilet bowls, fence posts, you name it. Yes, we have. The idea is to give the microbes a place to live and form stable biofilms. It's like a microbe motel. 